Um, so with that, what I want to do is to introduce our keynote speaker. Um, Fred had introduced himself uh, earlier, um, but what's great about Fred is that he actually, uh, him and I were co-workers on this team before I, uh, before I took it over. So um, he's had a great relationship with us. He did a lot of internal evangelism as well um, around open source. Um, and he's just been an open source advocate for all of that time. Um, but he's also done things like writing books. Um, he lives in this wonderful city called Montreal. You may have heard of it. Um, so with that, I'm just going to go ahead and give it over to Fred. Thanks, Fred. I don't know for you, but the food is starting to, like, I'm, I'm going to do a food coma. Uh, I'm going to speak. <laughs> so, yeah, my name is Fred. Uh, I recently uh, go back as a freelancer at No Lion is Born King. I have a super cheesy tagline. It's like we help company being the king of their jungle. Like it's cheesy enough. It's good enough. So basically uh, business development, marketing, yes, visibility, and all those kind of things. So uh, <coughs> when Sim asked me to do the keynote, I said, this is not a good idea. But when he asked me again and said, Fred, would you like to do a keynote? I said, okay, uh, what I'm going to talk about with uh, room with a bunch of people way more brilliant than me. I was like, yeah, should I talk about open source? Should I talk about Microsoft versus open source? And I decided to do something a little more high level, more about, uh, you know, that phrase, with great power come great responsibility. So I wanted to do something interesting. I wanted to put my Spider-Man costume, but uh, I looked like this. So uh, I decided not to do it for your own highs, uh, because you would probably die bleeding and those kind of things. But uh, Tommy said it. Uh, I used to work at Microsoft a couple of years ago. I was technical evangelist. Uh, funny enough, it's been like, I don't know, five, six years. And they hired me because I was not a Microsoft guy. Actually, I said no a couple of times, and they harassed me, and at some point I said, okay, I'm going to join the team. But I was doing open source stuff, and I want to tell you this, because at some point I'm going to talk about Microsoft a little bit, and I want you to know that I was part of that team at some point. But I used to work at Mozilla also after. I was technical evangelist with Christian and Robert before we all ran away. But uh, <laughs> it, was a, it was a great time. So, uh, again, open source, I've always been uh, in that world. So, what is the great power? Actually, why are we here? Like Thomas said, is said it. Tommy is yeah. Like we want to learn more about your view on open source. But I would say that uh, Thomas was kind of wrong a little bit, like he used to. But now just a little more. Uh, I would say that we are here to celebrate you, to celebrate what you are doing in the community, to celebrate who you are, what you are doing to make the Canadian community evolve what you make for the technology to be better, to work better together. And when you look at the agenda for today, yes, there's a part about like giving feedback to Microsoft, but it's like one hour out of all that day. Like most of the time we eat, because we <laughs> ate a lot. Like that was super good, but really like too much. Like, and I, and I have space for food. So that was a little bit too much, it was super good. And, and we're gonna go out for drinks after, so basically, the day is about mingling, it's about networking, it's about knowing each other because some of you I know, probably I don't know, half of you, the other half I don't know you or I don't know you yet or I just met you today or you have no idea what was like that Harper guy was speaking today and it's, it's kind of okay because Canada's community is big but at the same time it's kind of small. So today is really about celebrating what you do day to day in your own community, in your own user groups, in your own company. Thomas was kind of right too. Microsoft needs you. Does that logo so nice? I love it so much. <laughs> like, good. I love it so. And, and I'm a, kind of like a crazy cat man. So a crazy cat man with a unicorn and another cat doing ninja. I tried to teach my cat to do this, but it's not working. But it's actually needs. Microsoft needs you, but it don't needs you in a way you're thinking, or you used to think. It's been a long time ago. I was at Microsoft before Satya, and I, I'm not going to say that Rami's job is easier because it is. But in my time, in my old time, when I was younger and I was working at Microsoft, I was the evil, the guy working for the evil company, going to talk to those PHP and Python and Ruby guys and talking about Linux to Microsoft employees that were like, what the hell are you talking about? Like, Linux is the enemy and blah, blah, blah. It's true. Microsoft is there to make money. Any company is there to make money. We need to make money for a living. 
But today, they need you not to like be the biggest evil company. They need you to understand what they can do better. They need you to get your input. They need you because now, today, they work well with other. They play a lot better with other. It's not perfect. Don't get me wrong. But it's going in the right direction. So what the heck, at the end of the day, are we doing here? This is me like five years ago. I was slimmer. No. So uh, I think it was kind of like in the title of the event. Today is an open source connection event. It's an influencer connection event. And I don't even know why I put like little pony image. I just think that it was nice. So, uh, so you're all like little pony people. But uh, actually, everybody in the room, whether you like it or not, you're influencers. And actually, everybody in the world are kind of like influencers. You influence your brother-in-law, or your mother, or your brother, whatever. But in your case, you're a truly influencer in what I would call one of the best community out there, the technology community in Canada, Montreal, Calgary, Vancouver. That inquiry is not that good, but uh, <laughs> like, uh, uh, like Ottawa, Toronto, and all those places. So you are all influencers, except this guy. <laughs> I know where you sleep, man. <laughs> I don't know why we are still inviting Martin after all these years. <laughs> you have that much budget, like Sim. You need to invite just people like this. So yeah, it's a good thing we no. Now we see a little more the picture of Martin. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah. I would like to, yeah. So I don't know why we invite this guy, but uh, still, I love Martin. Uh, we can tell. That's me. Yeah, I'm a mean person. I'm from Quebec. So when I when I when I started when I started to work at Microsoft, they were like, "It's okay, Fred. You're from Quebec." They were justifying everything. Like I was able to be mean and not say sorry all the time because I was like, "No, I'm from Quebec. Like this is my excuse." So. <laughs> So this guy taking a picture of his picture, and I am the one who is pretentious or whatever. So, <laughs> so uh, joke aside, uh, even Morten, I have a hard time to admit, but even this guy is a influencer. So uh, everybody in the room, seriously, and, and why we're saying this, because you're leaders. You're leaders in your community, different ways, different part of your community. Sometimes that's going to be, as I said, in user group and company. But the thing is that some of you, you know it. Don't be humble. Like, some, you know it. You know that you're leaders. You know that you're influencers. But some of the people in the room they were like, why Microsoft invited me? I, no. Colin is like, what are you doing? <laughs> nice. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the thing is that you're a leader. And you are also experts. Different ways. And I, I have a love-hate relationship with that word because most of the time, People that are telling, like it's a self-award word. Like people, oh, I am an expert in that thing. For me, it's bullshit. No, people will tell you if you're an expert in that thing. People will recognize you as an expert. Sometimes it's just about perception. Like Matthew, at some point, we're saying that this guy is an expert in HTML. It's just because he did one or two talks and was running a user group. But I had to fix all this code. Which I never done still before. Which I never done before. <laughs> but still, it's about perception. Sometimes it's true, and and I'm pretty sure I don't know everybody in the room, but I'm pretty sure that most of the people in the room, except Matthew, you are expert. You have an expertise in something, and yeah, and why I'm saying this is because you also have a voice. And when it comes to voice, it's not about like a picture. Yeah, are you laughing at me? I'm like super insulted. <laughs> well, no, it's a joke. You're uh, from Quebec. I'm from Quebec. <laughs> I'm from Quebec. Yeah, thanks, Richard. You don't have a, a travel to do now. You don't have to catch a flight or something. <laughs> so uh, you have a voice. And when we talk about influencers, sometimes it's kind of negative. It's like, oh, no. Like, like you need to have a lot of followers on Twitter. You need to have a lot of likes on Facebook. And for me, it's not about the number. It's about the quality. Today, it's not about the number. We could have probably reached a lot more people. No, it's about the quality of people that are in the room. And you may think about it. And what's happened most of the time when people think about Microsoft, it's like, Microsoft is making millions of dollars. What it is to pay like some food for dinner, lunch, and bringing up 
not even to a, a venue. They bring us to the office because they're so cheap. And, and after, they're going to pay for drinks. But trust me, how it's working in any big company. Yes, there is million. Oh, it's coming to Canada. Oh, it's coming to, I don't know which department Sim is part of. And it's coming to Sim theme. And it's coming to that event. It's, it's a part of what Microsoft has in budget. And it's probably a big part of this budget from what I know. And he decided to, no, I want to invest in those people. I want to bring those people here. So when you think about it, it's like it's an afternoon and an evening. And it looks like, yeah, it's not that much. It's a lot of things. So if you are in that room, it's because there is at least one person in Microsoft that saw you in the community that heard about you and then say, oh, my God, like, we need to talk to that person. We need to talk to that woman, to that guy, because they have an expertise. They know what they're talking about. We need to connect with those people. Why are you laughing, kid? Oh, I'm not laughing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm smiling in agreement. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, so narcissistic. So, but you have a voice, and you're part of the community, and this is what is important. Because I remember when I started to be an evangelist, I was part of the community. I think I'm still part of the community, but at some point, you do a lot of things, and you kind of disconnect from what happened on the ground, what happened on the field. But you are the people that are still in the field. You're still there day to day, running user groups, talking to customers, learning new technology, trying new technology, giving advices, and a lot of things. And for all those reasons, you are influencers. But the thing is that, whether you like it or not, and this is one thing you're probably going to say, like, oh my god, I lost the last 45 minutes. Like, that was like, not a, I didn't have any, like, revelation from Fred's talk, but I don't know for you, but I realized recently that because some people call me influencer, I was like, yeah, oh, I have responsibility. Yeah, like, like turning my phones off when there is someone speaking. It's part of your responsibility. <laughs> We're not playing with your OLEDs because it's really disturbing. But uh, you have responsibility and you have responsibilities. And for me, there is two. The second one is to give. I would say to give back, because I don't know for you, but I think, like, if I take my own example, I think I have a, I had a successful career. I went from developer, managed team project. I was like, oh, I would like to be an evangelist. I got an offer. I was traveling all across Canada, and I say, no, I want to reach out to more people. I went to Mozilla. I was traveling all over the world, doing conferences everywhere, and workshop. I was like, hey, I think I, it's great. I think it's interesting. But yes, I don't think I would be where I am right now without like the fact that, okay, I don't think I'm that bad. But there is people that help me to be there. There is people that believe in me at some point. There is people that were running user group where I was able to go and listen and learn and meet people and grow my network. So I think I honed a lot to people at least in Montreal because I was there. I was there. But I think has an influence, we need to give, and we need to give back. It's always a question of balance, of course. Some people, they're a freelancer, you cannot give free sh stuff all the time. Like, you need to pay your food, your partner, your beer. So you need to pay those things, so you need to make money, but at some point, you need to find a great balance about like, hey, what can we do for the community? How can I give back, but still do what matters for me, still have a work, still have a paycheck at the end of the day? And the second one, and this is why I don't like Martin at all, because the last time we were at the same conference, I was talking about responsive web design. Didn't check the agenda, went in the morning, I say, oh, oh, Martin is talking about responsive images. Like, I need to remove that part from my talk. And this morning, I was checking at the agenda. I was like, oh, I have a part about a tick. So Martin is talking about a tick. So I think at some point, we're kind of like Kerma brother. He is the fat one. I'm the smallest one, but it's it for me as a special meaning. Uh, but it's part of what we need to do. So let me go back why or to whom we own those things. The thing is that has an influencer. You have a tribe. I love that word so much. Uh, it's coming out, I think it's Seth Godin that was using this all uh, quite often in his book. Uh, you have a tribe. You have people that follow you, that know you that reads, they read what you're writing on Twitter, on Facebook, on LinkedIn, they read your blog posts, they listen to you when you speak at conferences, they look at you. You are example. You are leaders. You're an influencer. They look at you. 
And the thing is that some people, they know it, they understand, they see it, they realize that, oh my god, I have influence on people. But sometimes we don't realize that. But those people, they look at you. So you have an impact on those people. And this is why I was talking about a tick and giving back to people. Yeah, you like my joke, you have impact. Yeah. <laughs> There's one people laughing at that, like, Peter, you're not listening, or you're sleeping, or like you're looking at me, which is totally fine for you, but I'm sad for the mini. That was a joke. Yeah. This That's is a this is all you got from that slide. <laughs> I think you cleared the car. The car's pretty low. I think you got a lot of air. Yeah. I still feel bad for the mini. Okay, next slide. That's a unibot. So, <laughs> so you have an impact. And the thing is that that impact can be negative. Is it the right negative? 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 negative. negative. Yeah. Actually, William, will you say negative? Yeah. I love, I love like French people from Europe because my accent looks way better when they are in the room. So, uh, <laughs> I know him for like 30 minutes. So, uh, it's, from Quebec, it's okay. I'm from Quebec, it's okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> I don't know where we are going with that thing. Uh, so, the impact you have. Oh god, now we, now you start to regret to having me. So uh, the impact you can have is kind of like it can be bad. And it's not that you want to have a bad impact. It's not that you want to have a negative impact. But it may not be what you want. I wrote a book. And my cork was like, oh, I don't have any mouse pad. Let's use Fred's book. I was like, yes, but I'm like, that's not really why I wrote the book. <laughs> And this is the only utility that the guy found for my book. And at the beginning, I was like, seriously, man? Seriously? And I was like, okay, it's not the impact that I wanted, but I have that guy. He did a better job that day because, like, he used my book as a mouse pad. But still, it's an example that, hey, sometimes you have an impact, you, or you want to have an impact, because sometimes it's really, it's planned. You want to have an impact on people's life, like uh, technical evangelists. Yes, of course, at the end of the day, they want you to, use the, con like the technology from the company to work for. But real technical evangelists, the real technical evangelists that I know, like Rami, like Thomas, they want you to be successful, no matter what, of course. They would prefer that you would be successful with their technology, but they want you to be successful because they're passionate about, so they want to have an impact. Sometimes that's not working. Sometimes Rami's gonna have someone and, uh, this person will say, okay, I will never use Microsoft technology for X, Y, Z reason. And, it, and it's okay. It's not okay if you do this all the time. Because it would be either a shitty evangelist or just lose his job. But uh, sometimes you don't have the impact you want. But sometimes it can be positive. And this is where it's your responsibility to have that positive impact on people. And when I'm talking about impact, and, and people are like, yes, no, yes. Yeah, I kind of get what you're saying, Fred, but it's like, I don't think I have a huge impact. I think it's like just a drop of water in the ocean. It can be true, but you can have a bigger impact than you think. And I have a small story. Some of you may know that guy. He's in Montreal, Christian. I met Christian when I was at Microsoft. I was leading something called Make One Last War. We are doing a hackathon. This guy was studying. He was not really into Microsoft technology. He was not really into any technology. He was starting. And he went to Hackathons and was like, okay, I'm curious, blah, blah, blah. And I talked to him and I listened to one of my talk and I talked to someone else that was there. And we helped him to build some stuff. And it was like, hey, Microsoft Platform seems great. And this is one example. But I met him like recently. I, I saw him recently. And it was like, he's living out of like the application he is working on. Like he's living out from Windows Phone Platform with his yeah, application. He is now an MVP, which is uh, an award gave by Microsoft for. Uh, the most uh, valuable professional. So you have an expertise in a specific Microsoft technology. Microsoft recognize him as an expert in this technology. And this guy is happy now. And the last time he was like, Fred, I want to thank you. I was like, why? Did I pay like first round? I don't remember. It was like, no, 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 I want to thank you. It's because of you I'm there. I was like, whoa, why? Like, what are you talking about? And say, it's you, you believe in me. I had issues at the beginning because I was starting. Uh, you help me, you show me the positive and the not so positive side of that platform. And you were there to help me when I had issues. 
and it's because of you on there. I was like, oh shit. I was like, yeah, okay, it's nice. But I did not expect to have that impact on that guy. And I probably have other person that are like, hey, Freddie, help me. And it's not a story about me, it's just to tell you like, hey, this guy, I have an impact on his life. So you have impact on people and you may not even know about it. Because I know this guy, because now he's kind of a friend, he told me. But he could have lived just he would go on his way and never talk to me about it. So you have impact on people. So you have a responsibility to give back. You know the guy that was uh, hiding behind the uh, wall, Ray? <laughs> One way to give back to the community is to share with people. Wait, Ray's doing this. People in code is always helping many organizations, many companies. Ray's speaking as many conferences, and he's doing a great job. What he is doing? Why he's doing this? Of course, he may build his network, he may meet new people, he may be seen as an expert. You do this because he has a passion. You want to share his passion with people, and you can do it too. Is it, is it a racist joke if I think that he looks like, see? Can you do the gangbang style? Or yeah? Okay. <laughs> Good. I was afraid to be racist. So, uh, Kevin, the mod guy. This guy, he created a user group, DevTO. Like, who in Toronto doesn't know DevTO? Like, I love that group. And he's not alone. He created this with other people. But still, he created a group where people go once a month to learn about technology, not all technical people, different technology. This is amazing, like on his own time. And, and I'm pretty sure you get a lot of great benefits out of it, like meeting people, getting more, a bigger network and all those things. But at the end of the day, he created this because he thought that Toronto was missing a more uh, like general type of user group, not only specific to one technology. You can create stuff, you have the power to create stuff. Look at this awesome guy. Yeah, the, it's just because there has a cat. Like, me in the face. yeah. Not very nice. That's why I love your cat. It's a cat. I start to regret to do that day. It's been years that we didn't see each other. I, I think we should keep cat, cat yeah. right now. For yeah. Seven yeah. Years. Six people. So, task. This guy is mentoring people from Lighthouse Lab. And this is one thing out of like 10,000 things he's doing. Like, don't you have a life outside of technology? I don't think so. <laughs> this guy is... is, I'm is plugging in that matrix. I'm no getting out of here. Yeah, he's <laughs> done. But he's doing a great job. And Taz is like, is like, he got an expertise. It's probably like, don't get me wrong, I love JavaScript. But this guy loves it like just a little bit too much or like <laughs> at the next level. So I, I'm afraid when I'm doing technical talk and, and about like web development and this guy's in the room because I'm, I'm going to look like someone who doesn't know what he's talking about. But you take an expertise he has and he mentor people. This is nice. I think this is pretty nice. Fred, which has a beautiful name, by the way. Fred. <laughs> he started a kind of mix between a music festival and virtual reality. He's educating a part of industry. That don't, know, that don't know that much about technology. He's educating people. Why he's doing this? First, because he's probably making money for a living. But still, he loves VR. He loves that technology. He loves virtual reality. He wants to educate people about it. This is amazing. So you can educate people about your technology, about your passion. Trendsetter. Harry. Yeah, actually, that was the best picture I found that was kind of like high level. So uh, that ruined all the professional side of you today, but still. Actually, I like it. I like it. Uh, and, and, and with Werax, we started Werax with another friend, and they're setting trends. And it's not just in Montreal. We started this in Montreal, but now this hackathon's about wearables. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. What they did? They're not super master of like trend setting about like wearable. That was there before. But they make it more approachable for people. They make it more easy for people to go to hackathons and, hey, I don't have to buy wearables. Like, there is a full organization that's going to bring those devices to help me. You can set some trends. This is part of what you can do. <laughs> Potter. Nice. Honestly, that was the best yes. picture. Yes. Honestly, that was the best I 
resolution-ish picture of you that I found. <laughs> that was at the massive event that I run almost every year. Actually, you look better than, like this. But uh, Dude, the hat, so, the hat. Potter, if you are in Toronto and you don't know Ari and Matthew, uh, like I don't know what you're doing. This guy is everywhere, and yes, he, he, he was running HTML Toronto uh, last weekend. I was in Toronto for a wedding, and this guy was running a green screen at the wedding so people can enjoy like downtime and having fun and great souvenir. Fuck, this guy could have said, like, no, I'm just going to sit down with everybody, have a drink, and take it easy. He was like, no, let's take that wedding to the next level. Let's do a green screen because we are tech people. And it's like, it's, actually, I never saw a green screen at a wedding. So that was kind of weird. And, and really interesting at the same time. I got pretty, really good pictures out of this. But, and he's helping everybody. And what is great with Potter, I, I always, like, pick this guy because I love you. Because I love him. But uh, still, we... <laughs> I think we have a start of romance now. But uh, start. <laughs> start. <laughs> Thank you. But the thing is that when you go at events and there is someone running to get new chairs and, and new whatever, and Potter is doing this. And it's not like, it could say like, no, like I'm worth more than the guy taking the chair. I have an expertise. I can do this and that. No, this guy's just like, what can I do to make it work? This is amazing. This is what most of you do. This is what we do, and this is great. I love it. And there is a lot more ways to help people, to give back to the community. And you can take this to a next level. You can be more, I would say, socially engaged. Ahmad, where do you come from? Where, where do you come from, Ahmad? Syria. Oh, shitty. You, uh, yeah, usually, OK. okay. Yeah, now you, you just broke my ship. So, <laughs> thanks. I gave up. I gave up. No, but, like, it's it's funny enough, funny at the same time, because usually, and and, uh, and there's a story behind this, usually people ask him, like, where you come from? And say, Toronto. We felt like, no, 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 no. Like, where you really come from? This guy is a fucking Canadian. He's from Toronto. What is that stupid question? And the thing is that I, I give myself permission to say that it's a stupid question, because I probably said it the first time. And I was like, bah, and they're like, white stupid person asking me that question. But this guy is talking about that story mostly ever. And now you just tricked me by saying like uh, Syria or whatever, but like, but you should not give up because it's important. Because you go on Slack. I saw this caution on Slack and I was looking for a blog post. I told you did a blog post. You're gonna do a blog post about it. But like, it's just creating awareness about something that people don't understand. People don't think that it can harm to have a question that is like maybe stupid for some people. So he took, that visibility that he got, he took that leadership, that influence that he got, and he's talking about that topic. I did the same recently. I talked about, I wrote a blog post about mental illness because I got visibility. I got a really shitty year last year. I got issues, and I'm gonna share it to the rest of the world. Part of it was like, okay, that's gonna be pretty good for me to just share it outside of the world. You but yeah. It's kind of half like uh, it's funny and, and, and someone needs to punch you in the face. <laughs> uh, but I agree. I agree. Uh, there's so many stupid people in Quebec. But uh, mental illness. Like I decided to write a blog post because I got a lot of readers on my blog. I share it on social media. And if that can help one person, I'm good. Those two things have no relation at all or no direct relation with technology. But we have access to people. We have a tribe. We have people we can reach out to, people that see us. I think it's great if you have any calls, if you have any. This is why you saw so many uh, humorists or, or like, like uh, TV show people or whatever actor that are always like talking about different things in life, different calls, because they've got visibility. They can take that visibility to make this world better. And now it's like, oh my God, it's eye level, it's crazy, we're gonna do yoga and all those things. But the point is just like, you got a visibility, you can use it if it makes sense for you to doing good, to doing good things. So in other words, you need to do epic shit. You need to help that community to grow. You need to help that technology to go to the next level. You need to help people. And it's really to find a great balance between uh, the other. So sorry about the other people that weren't on the slides. It's either because I don't know you or not and interesting enough to be in a slide. <laughs> so choose your choose a slide. That's okay.
So uh, there's also the ethical responsibility. And, and this is a huge word. I'm going to let Martin say the really uh, brilliant stuff about it. But for me, it comes to, yes, you need to choose between the good and the bad. But for me, it comes to being honest. It's one of the things that has influence, or you need to be honest with people. It's OK if you don't know everything. It's OK if, like, yeah, being honest like I did before. Like, hey, I work at Microsoft. Uh, I was not a Microsoft lover far, far from it a couple of years ago. But now I'm more pragmatic. I was there. I have fun. I have a great time. I think they were more open than before. But I used to work there. I was also transparent. For me, transparency is so important. I don't know for you. I don't know if it's working in Toronto or everywhere. But Montreal got quite often offers to go, oh, let's go to that event. Or, oh, you got a free ticket for that conference and all those things. And, and obviously, marketing people, they want you to blog about it. They want you to promote their events. And it's OK. I have no issues against this. but. My point is always like, OK, if it's not good, I'm going to say it's not good. If it's good, I'm going to say it's good. But I'm always going to say like, hey, by the way, I got that free ticket for that even. Because it's transparency. And you don't want to lose this. Because credibility is so hard to get, so easy to lose. You don't want to lose your credibility. And trust me, if you lie, if you try to be someone else, if you're not honest or not transparent with people, at some point, honesty and transparency, transparency is going to hit you in the face really, really hard. That's going to come back to you, and that's not going to be fun at all. You know, Colin? Yeah, something hits you in the face, too. Yeah. Uh, such a jerk. So uh, you really need to be honest and transparent because uh, that's going to come back at some point. How often? How often? People ask you, what is the best technology for X, Y, Z? That probably happened every other day. What is your answer? Honestly, and I don't want a real answer. It's just a rhetoric question. Okay. You, you were ready to say JavaScript, huh? Yes. <laughs> it's it's, it's going to be React. Like, React is clearly the best technology. Uh, so, so, what I like, and this, it's most, sorry? No, no, I can hear. It's all right, it's all right. Oh. As long as it's JavaScript. Yeah, as long as it's running on the web. So uh, what do we answer to that question? Most of the time, let's be honest. We're going to answer the technology we love the most, the technology we know the most. Is it always the right answer for the best technology question? Depends on your need, depends on your system, depends on whatever. But most of the time, yeah, when we talk about technology, we're all open source lover here. We're going to say, no, no, just go open source. Yes, most of the time it's true. Sometimes it may not be true. Sometimes you may need to use something proprietary. Sometimes you need to, OK, I'm going to do PHP. Oh, no, PHP is not good. Yeah, PHP has been there since forever. Maybe it's good. There is CMS, and it's working well. Oh, no, you need to use no, because no is the, I don't know why it's still like, it's not new, but it's the, we talk about it like if it's still new, like it's the new cool thing, like it's been there since forever now. But still, like, oh, no, 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 you need to use no. Why? Is it good? It can be good. It can be bad for your need. So I think my point is that we need to be pragmatic. Like I did a couple of years ago, and I'm not saying that like I did this before you, but it's just like when Microsoft approached me, I was not a big, and I was like, no, nope, not going to happen. And I was like, OK, OK, let's be more open. Let's be more open. And this is basically what Microsoft is doing today. And it doesn't mean that you need to be tasteless. It doesn't mean that you don't need to have your preference. Like, you can like React. It's OK. But like, if your answer is always React to every question about, like, oh, what technology should I use? Or is it good for my project and this and that? Maybe it's right. Maybe React is really the holy grail that we're waiting for years. Not quite sure. But still, you still have your taste. You still have your opinion. But keep in mind that you really need to be more pragmatic. And for me, it's part of that ethic. So today, I know we started late. Uh, I'm talking a lot, like, all the time. And it's not a long day. It's not even a two day or three days. Basically, it's like, hey, uh, we go eat. We listen to some talk. We chat a little bit about Microsoft technology, and we'll go out for social stuff. But don't get me sim, like, Tell me if I'm saying something stupid, but I think it's only the beginning. I think two days is only the beginning. 
today is to celebrate you. Today is to know each other. Today is to it, it's to start that connection between. I don't like to say this like two sides of the world that we're not talking because it's not true. But sometimes the perception is about like hey Microsoft and open source. It's not true anymore. It used to be true. It's not true anymore. So today, be that influencer. Stay curious. Ask question. Connect with other people. This is cute, huh? No? Okay. Connect. <laughs> okay, thanks. Connect with people. But do more, do more than connecting. It's a good thing to know that Ahmad is from Toronto. Now I kind of know Ahmad. We used to work together. Uh, but engage with other people. Like, like hey. <laughs> yeah. Go in a bank. Uh, stole some money. And go to the prison after. Oh, I thought that was that would make a lot of sense. Is it a fresh thing? I think that's a Yeah, no, it's uh yeah. It looks like it. Is that an electric chair? Pretty sure they're on an electric chair. Wow. A lot of a lot of engineer like prison thing, listening to the talk, and the only thing is like they have the same number. They have the same ID. That guy's gonna tell you on the switch. Primary key validation. My talk. <laughs> so engage with other people because this is again this is the beginning of something that I hope will be a lot bigger, will have a big impact. Because I was talking about Martin stuff. I was talking about having an impact, being an influencer, having a voice. But it's each other, it's it's each one of us. What happened if we all go together? What happened like we have people from Mozilla? Uh, people from Microsoft, people from different, we have someone from Apple. I don't remember who told me to work for Apple. Someone worked for Apple. No, okay. So, like, we have people from different company. We have people from different industry. Small, bigger company. We have people from different city. What about we work together to make this community a little bit better? So, today, we don't have much time, but share feedbacks. You saw the Microsoft employee, share feedback with those people. The good thing, but also the bad thing. But be constructive. Like, I don't know why I put Doc Brown on this, but that, that feels like being constructive. So be constructive. If there is something bad, if you come talk to Remy and say, like, hey, I think Windows is shit. Tell him why. Tell him why you don't like it. Tell him why you don't like to use Visual Studio. Tell him why are you in Xamarin right now? Like, tell him why Xamarin is good. Tell him why Azure is like, oh, you try WordPress and I got this issue. Uh, not just like it's not good. Share great feedback. Because the thing that you may not know, or I don't know if Tommy said it and I was not listening because I was playing on my phone while I was speaking, but one of the things is that those people work at Microsoft. And how often you can just take the phone and talk to someone at Microsoft. You can do this for technical support, but like, I mean, real people. Like people that are part of the fit, people that can bring that feedback to the product team. And they're gonna do it if it makes sense. Like if it's like interesting feedback and, and constructive feedback and you give detail you give detail details. So you have the opportunity to talk to people, to give you feedback, to have that impact on a freaking huge company. Like when I was saying to people like, hey, Microsoft is being more open, people were like, yeah, yeah, kind of. Like, this is a huge ship. Like, just to, to turn for one or two degree, it's taking forever. Not because they're like a bunch of dumb people. It's just huge. It's a huge ship. And there's people that are there since forever. I remember when I did an event in the Montreal office, I brought a, a Linux user group. There was like three people in the room that wanted my boss to fire me. Because they did not understand. And I was like, hey, we can run Linux on Azure. And hey, they're like people. <laughs> just like we have an office, we can offer that. It's like, I don't even care if it's not business related. I just want to help those people, like help the community. So you need, we needed to educate people inside. And I, I think you still have, like Microsoft people still have to educate some people inside. But it says huge, this is a huge ship. So it's taking some time and it's normal. But being part of that change is an opportunity that not a lot of people have. So take this as an opportunity. And be excited, be really excited. Like, I don't know for you, like, I like the picture. Yeah, it's, it's me when I was uh, two years old. Yeah, I still have the same hair. So, uh, <laughs> no, but <laughs> seriously, like, be excited being here. Uh, it's really, I would say, flattering. Is it a word? Yeah, yeah. flattering. That's a word. Thanks. Uh, 
Yeah, that word, the one I just said before, flattering. So it's uh, it's it's like hey, from all the people in Canada, and this is a big and a small community. They invited you, like look at a list and say like that person is great. Like we should talk to him. We should have his feedback. It's I think it's just a good thing. Like you're part of the people. When Microsoft said like hey, we want to spend time, we want to spend money on those people to be here and have fun. This is the most important thing. Like if you're bored, if you're like friend there that use Chrome is like, hey, this that talk can finish at some point. Like, do something else. If it's not, if it's not your place, if you don't feel comfortable, if you don't like being there, if you feel like Microsoft's trying to rip you off, like get free uh, advice for free, and, and, and you say like it's it's not good, it's not interesting, I don't like it. It's okay. It's okay. Nobody like. Actually, it's not true. We close the door and you cannot leave until the end of the day. But actually, the idea is to have fun. And trust me, I know most of the people that work for that events and, and they like to have fun. Like, they're there to uh, make the thing go forward. But they're interesting people. They're nice people. Look at that face. Uh, you're like, holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> but the thing is that <laughs> don't stop today. Today is really the first step. When you go back home, tonight or you fly back home tomorrow or whatever. This is the beginning. You know those people. You can contact them by email. You can call them. You can like, uh, Remy is the only youngest person that is on Snapchat. So if you understand that thing, you can talk with Remy. Uh, there is way, uh, I just don't understand that thing. Maybe I'm too old. But uh, it, like, it's just the beginning of a process. You are part of a community of people that can influence where technology is going. and right now where Microsoft is going because we're at Microsoft even. So don't stop today. Uh, Microsoft is more open than ever. They're not trying to cut the throat. They're just friendly. It's like, like they're more friendly than ever. And and there is some Canadian uh, Canadian initiative, make Web Not War. If you go on webnotwar.ca, it's coming from Canada. Canada, a couple of years ago, we were leading the open source initiative from Microsoft over the world. People were like, oh my god, this is amazing what you're doing. It's about open source, open data, interoperability, and it's coming from here. This is a great example of what can be done. And I was there at that time. Uh, Bruce joined a little bit later. Uh, Sim was there. And, and yes, we kind of like started. Yeah, Colin was, was at the first, first one. Well, not war even. But my point, I was going to you right after. My point is that, yes, Microsoft employee kind of like started this. But without people like Colin, without people, we had Ben Wapiet in Montreal, we had Martin that was there, unfortunately. Uh, but we are also other great people. And it's because of people in the community that we were able to realize this. We were able to get great feedback. We were able to make things go forward. And I don't know for you, I'm freaking surprised. First, the first day that I learned that Microsoft was on GitHub, I was like, oh, the world's going to explode. It's like, this is a crazy, amazing next step. And now, you look at some stats, they have like more than 1,600 repos. And not like, oh, documentation repos. No, no, like real project. We're talking about like ASP. We're talking about what Visual Studio Code. Or, uh, we're talking about a lot of like libraries and anything for Azure. And Azure, you can run. Linux VM, you can run PHP, Python, Ruby, name it. It's running on a Microsoft technology and Microsoft and the cloud of Microsoft. Think about, there's so many, so many, so many examples. They worked a lot. The push, they were one of the main contributors for the, uh, the Linux kernel. They did a lot with Cordova. I remember when I was at Firefox, I was, uh, my focus was, uh, Mozilla, my focus was Firefox OS. And we were working closely with Microsoft to make Cordova work on Firefox OS and be able to deploy on Windows Phone and be able to deploy on other platform. So that was crazy. That's crazy. And this is where Microsoft is. But again, this will have a lot of work to do. Like any other company, that's never going to be perfect. No company is going to be perfect. But they're going in the right direction. And what I really like today is the fact that they really listen. Today is not a bullshit day like, oh, we invite you for the sake of like you thinking that we really care about you. No, it's really like they really care about you. You are there to give feedback. You're there to connect with people. So 
Get your shit together. I know most of you does. I know the people that I know in the room, I know you're like a real influencer. You have a great impact. You're doing great things in the community. People I don't know, I would like to know what you're doing in the community because, or what you're doing in the industry at all because I think it's amazing. If you're there, it's because you definitely have a big impact. So whether you like it or not, you are an influencer. Some people are like, hey, it's nice. Some people are less on both. I know I am less on both. You understand yourself. You know yourself. Some people will be more on both. They will say, no, no, no. Trust me, if you're in the room, you are one of those people. So, hack like one. Always stay yourself. I love that slide. I need to put it in all my talks. But stay yourself. We're not asking. When I was thinking about like what you need to do, like your responsibility as an influencer, to give back, to be ethic. But stay yourself. Always keep keep what makes you you. But always think, always keep those responsibility in mind. And really hack like an influencer. And it's starting. Today, it's starting tomorrow, it was it started yesterday. But really, in the end, and I told you I got like I go like super depressed now. No, it's not true, but I got I got like a special years. I'm thinking about like hey, where I'm going in my life and all those things. I have like all those philosophical thinking for a couple of months and, and trying to prioritize things in my life and has influencer, has someone who has an impact. Is it really the number of likes on my Facebook pages? That is the thing that I want to accomplish? Is it like at the end of the day, at the, at, in the end of uh, my life or whatever, it's like now it's super like everybody's going to be done. But like think about it, like a couple of years. Is it like, hey, I was so happy because in my life I got like like so many thousand likes on my Facebook page or so many followers. Or is it like, hey, I remember Christian. And like I helped that guy have a career. He wouldn't have a career if it was that good. But I was part, I was part of the change. I was part of that change. Kevin, help people. Come on, help people. Even Martin, help people. Like, those things are important. Be part of those things. Be part of the change. Helping people to reach the next level. So on that note, probably speak too much. I don't know if that makes you think. If you're like, oh my god, I eat too much. That was boring. Uh, in either case, most of you, I know you're past that realization. You already know that you have that responsibility. But think about other people. Think about other people you know. Think about those younger people or their people that are starting to be involved in the community. Help them grow. You're not going to, like, uh, how do you say this? Overshadow you or what is the word? Like, Sorry. when Microsoft, sorry? No, I was saying stop. Yeah, yeah. When 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 Microsoft hired Rami, it was basically replacing me, and 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 I was afraid because I was like, everybody will say that I was doing a shitty job before because this guy is, is way better than me, way younger, uh, more handsome, <laughs> and 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 more technical than I used to be, and doing great job. And don't talk about my beer; it's a sensitive topic. <laughs> but I was like, oh my god, maybe I was stupid. But I was like. Fred's not going to exist anymore at Microsoft. Like, Remy replaced this, this, this beautiful gentleman. And no, actually, like, he's just shining by his own. And I'm not saying that I helped this guy shine, but I said to my boss, like, you should hire that guy. Like, we, we were looking for someone with more experience. And I was like, this guy's a superstar. And again, you, you would never... Are you crying? <laughs> 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 but actually, uh, he is, he's a real superstar. And, and I, again, I'm not saying that he got the job because of me, but I hope that I was part of that, like this guy uh, jumping in the scene and being that rock star that he is right now. So help those people. That's not going to hurt you. And that's going to be wonderful. When you go at night, I'm going to go back to my hotel. To sleep, and I'm gonna think about Remy giving a hug to me. <laughs> I'm gonna have a beautiful night of sleep. <laughs> so on that note, yeah, that <laughs> it's funny that it's it, it's the only thing you find weird in all that 45 minutes. <laughs> I was talking about the whole thing. But, uh, <laughs> oh, okay, okay, thanks. Now it looks more like what I used to do. So uh, it was a pleasure.